When it rains in a city, the rain hits the asphalt and the concrete and it runs off. And that runoff accumulates it, trash, dirt, pollutants, dog dew, and rolls on down into a storm drain. And from the storm drain, it's usually directed into a, a common collector, which is inevitably a river or a stream. And so the stormwater runoff pollutes, ends up polluting the rivers and streams. Putting a rain garden or a swale in your yard is a perfect way to slow the flow. A rain garden is a device that's used at any location really to capture this stormwater runoff and allow it to behave more naturally instead of rushing into the storm drain system. Uh, so a rain garden is essentially a depression. It's really just a place for the rainwater to settle slowly. So the homeowner had an issue with runoff ponding up against the foundation. So we put in this small rain garden which is designed to deal with the runoff coming off the patio here and the small amount of roof runoff. It's designed to fully infiltrate that runoff volume in the soil. We dug down about a foot, we amended the soil and created really good infiltration capacity to get that water down into the ground. During large storm events, the rain garden is designed to overtop into the rock line swale and basically flow down throughout the landscape. You could put a rain garden in whether you live in Crescent City, Palm Springs, San Francisco, Susanville, Grass Valley, you name it. We have lots of different ecoregions in California but they still provide a lot of benefit and you would apply proper vegetation approaches and what have you to make sure that it's built according to the local climate and hydrology. There's lots of alternatives to a traditional lawn-based garden. Uh, the thing I tell people is to think about your little area as a, as a little watershed. So we're here at Dave's house. Dave, what do you want to do here? Um, so I don't have any gutters and when the water falls from there and hits here it kind of scours all that area and it pushes it down here. This is a low spot and all the water pools right there. Traditional planning uh, for a site, whether it's residential, commercial or whatever, is to direct water off the property because you don't want to flood the property. But we're now realizing that we want to use rainwater as a resource on the property and definitely have an exit if there's too much because we don't want any hazards. So the first thing we're going to identify is where's the high point? It looks like the roof in this case. Um, and then where is it flowing? A swale is basically a depressed area designed to sort of convey flow. It's really not necessarily designed to pond water. It's designed to carry water in sort of a non-erosive way. You can make a swale out of really anything. There's really all different types of materials that can be used. With this particular um, installation, we used what the homeowner had lying around, and that was basically these, these sort of river rocks. This rocky area here is basically slowing the runoff down. The rock helps with the infiltration capacity of the soil. So all this roof runoff is basically just infiltrating the soil once it gets there and it stays out of the street. If you live on a street that has ponding issues, putting in a rain garden or a swale along all of the houses is a great way to deal with it. Like on Elmer Street in Los Angeles area, a group of agencies, residents, and non-governmental organizations all work together to help slow the flow. It's hard to imagine before we did this project how bad the flooding was on this street. The installations we did on private property range from smart controllers and drip irrigation to water the, the low water use and drought tolerant plants to taking out their driveway and replacing it with uh, porous pavers. Some of the driveways that where we didn't use porous pavers, we put in a driveway drain and connected that drain to the bioswale. They got a rain barrel that's connected to their downspout and a little rocky swale for overflow from that rain barrel. They have swales in front of every house and underneath the street itself is a great big infiltration gallery. The plants we selected for Elmer Avenue are not all natives, although we did use some native species here. There's a lot of plants that are drought tolerant and California friendly that you can use in your rain gardens. Plants can directly reduce pollution by taking it up and converting it in their, actually in the plants themselves. And in some cases, they're simply serving to slow down the flow of water. They're actually great trash collectors. Trash is one of the big problems with stormwater pollution. And so the plants themselves actually catch a hold of the trash and detain it. 
Elmer Avenue has been a great success. It was even better than we had hoped it would be. Anyone can do this. If folks really start looking at how they landscape and, and starting to move away from these really resource intensive lawn and, and sort of bush type landscapes which we typically become accustomed to over time, um, I think we'll make some really large scale water quality benefits because what you do really makes a difference. <laughs> This is a mighty small